Hello, I'm Oliver the Shoe Man. Um, today's video, we're gonna be working on a pair of Aztec boots. Um, but before we get to that, I'm going to go over a few more things with these shoes. Um, one, a, I called it a welt because there's a, it serves the purpose of a welt. It gets stitched, it's what stitches the midsole to the boot, um, but Apparently, in the stitch down construction or clamp down, whatever you want to call it, when the leather upper goes down and gets folded out, it's not called a weld. It's just the stitch down construction. Um, also, I was told I touch my nose a lot or face. So today I'm going to try my best not to do that. Um, a few more things. These are a pair of boots. These are a um, pair of boots I've done before. I didn't do a video on them, but these are a pair of Red Wing Chuckle Boots. They normally come with a wedge sole, something like this. But I converted them to, uh, I guess, a sole with a heel on it. Um, I took everything off. I put a leather midsole like we did to these boots. And then I put a mini lug half sole overlay whatever you want to call it um that basically protects the stitching this is an actual welt it's not stitched on construction it protects the stitching from the welt to the midsole and adds more grip to it now i did a leather stacked heel base with the matching lug pattern top lift now this one is for sale up on the ebay page um i'll put the links in the description um but if you're interested these are a size 9b Red Wings made in the USA. Next pair of boots are these Danner, Danner Cadius. They're size eight and a half. Um, I just put the brand new sole on there and then I did a shine. I shined it up a little bit. So these ones are for sale too. All these boots I'm gonna show you are for sale. I just did them before without doing um, videos, but these are a pair of Stingray Cowboy boots, leather soles, stitched, rubber top lift vibram um, i cleaned and conditioned the uppers did a little bit of a shine these are a size eight and a half too and last boot probably my favorite these are a pair of thorough goods these are a size 8d it's the eight inch round toe which means it doesn't have the stitching around which is, makes it a mock toe but i did a natural color storm welt leather midsole with the vibram wedge sole these are also for sale on ebay um so if you're ever interested in either of those boots go go down to the um description and we and you can see them from there all right so now on to these boots these are a pair of aztec boots it's kind of faded but you kind of see aztec um so what we're going to do we're going to completely tear the boot apart from the welt down we're going to re-dye the leather uppers like a dark brown. And then we're going to go and sew a neutral storm welt on there, similar to this one. From there, we'll put a leather midsole. And we'll top it off, we're going to go with the white Vibram Christie sole. So stick around and see how I do it. Let's get started. All right, so I got this taken apart completely. Now, I found the best way to do it is just to cut the sole off. So I'm gonna try my best to... So what I'm now going to do is take my knife and being super careful not to touch the uppers, I'm going to cut in between the welt, which is, this is a plastic welt, and the leather uppers. And so what's that, what that's going to do is cut these threads right here that hold on.
Alrighty, with all the threads pretty much broken, I should be able to pull this off fairly easy. A few more. There it is. Voila. So that right there is like a foam filler to fill in cavity. We're gonna replace that with something a little bit better. You see those you see those threads that go all the way around the boot. I've got to grab them. Pull them out. So these threads are is what used to hold the welt on and so now that's not holding anything on we gotta take them off take them out because well one that's the right thing that's the right way to do it it's just lazy if you don't do it and i've come across shoes where there's like two or three rows of stitching in here that i've i've had to take out and it's just really annoying and time consuming, which I, which is why people don't do it in the first place. Because it's annoying and time consuming, but it's got to be done. Alrighty, now that I got all the old stitches pretty much cleared up, what I'm going to do is take some acetone and a little bit of steel wool and pretty much strip all the dirt paint there is a little bit of paint on there this one's already pretty much done i got first coat i still gotta let it dry before i could dye it but this is a little trick i picked up from steve at Beto's leatherworks um but basically you just this is a very fine fine um steel wool See, it's, it's already getting all that paint off. And doing this pretty much allows for a really good, nice base for the leather dye to stick to. Because you can't just go ahead and put dye over all the dirt and grime and stuff that these boots accumulated over the years. Um, yeah, the steel wool, it basically scrapes all the stuff off without leaving any crazy scratches in the actual leather itself. And then having the welt off actually allows me to get into this little part right here where otherwise it's super hard to clean. And now, oh. There's a little thread right there. I don't know if you can see it. All right. Right there. So that's why you need to take that out. Because you can see it from the outside. And then we got it out. All right, continue with the stripping. See so that? Pretty much cleaning it off, or cleaning all the threads out took about 15 20 minutes so it's really not that long but some people just they, they cheat take corners or cut corners just to save 15 20 minutes and there we go got all that paint off of there so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna let this dry i'm gonna put a couple coats of brown leather dye lincoln brown dye and hopefully that'll make it i want to give it a nice darker a dark tone to it that way 
the neutral welt or natural welt will play off very well. All right. All right, so we got Lincoln brown leather dye. So all I have to do is inside is a little dauber. I'm just gonna go first coat all the way around the boot. Try to get it as even as possible. And it's gonna look a whole lot darker than what it will, but once it dries, it'll lighten up. And if it's too dark and you don't like it, you can always lighten it up. Yeah, so we'll continue all the way around the boot. All right, so I finished dyeing them. I like them because they got, I don't know if you can tell, some dark, some brown, or some light, some dark areas. And I think because this is an old used boot, it gives it more of a distressed look, which I really like. So now next step is to take the storm welt and stitch it on. Alrighty, so this is the storm welt. This is what, this part right here, is the stitch. This is where the outsole stitching gets put on. There's a little hump there that gets pressed up against the boot. And then on the bottom side, that little groove there is where the stitches go. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, I spliced the edge so that when the two pieces come around and meet, it should be flawless. Flawless, that's the whole idea. All right, so I got a few stitches on. I got this part of the welt scabbed down so when it comes all the way around again, it meets, it should be flawless. Um, so all these little holes right here are the original welt holes. So I'm trying to follow that. If you take your needle, and go through the hole out into the shoe. And then you take your thread loop it around now you got this loop and then you got this thread bring it through the loop pull the, pull that side and then pull it tight and then you just gotta repeat that process all the way around the shoe all right took me a little bit over an hour just to do both shoes but there it is so far and so now i added steel shank now technically with wedge soles with wedge soles there's no part of the sole that doesn't touch the ground so you don't really need a shank i like to add shanks just to give more support this was an old shank i saw sal i salvaged from an old boot um but, so now we gotta fill that little cavity in. You see it's kind of raised up. And we do that with cork. So we start at the toe. Press it in. Basically gotta shape it. Press it into the cavity break this little piece off so I can reuse that and then hammer it in Alrighty, now I'm gonna go and sand all the excess off. Alrighty, now that it's flat, 
you're not gonna feel any bumps on the inside. Um, I didn't add any of the cotton or anti-squeak material to it because there's no leather on top of it. So now I'm just gonna add a layer of glue to the cork, to the leather welts, and then we'll go ahead and stack the leather midsole on top of it. All right. So this was what was inside the boot in the first place. Then I replaced it with cork. So this versus this, this obviously doesn't fill up the whole thing. And over time, this flattens out and offers no support. This will actually form to your foot as you wear it, give you more cushion and last longer than something like this. So this is garbage. This is cheap. It's, it's no good. All right, so now this machine has been giving me problems all day today and because we got a light color welt um and white stitch white white sewing thread it's gonna be hard you can't hide anything really so i'm gonna go real slow on this one all right let's try this again Did you look at that? It's almost hard to tell that transition is there, but let's just take one more look at that stitch. All the way around. Now, I've gone over it multiple times in my head. White sole or black sole? White or black? Now, white will obviously go with the light color. But I think the black would look really cool because it'll go dark, light, dark. I don't know. I'm going to try black. I think black will look good. I mean, if not, I could take it off and replace it if it's that bad. But I don't think it'll be that bad. But So, once you have the stitching on there, just get some glue. Now, with leather, I like to put a little bit more glue than I normally would. Simply because leather has a lot of... A lot of pores and then if you so if you're just to put a thin layer the pores of the leather will soak it up and it won't stick right so I either do one thick coat or two thin coats and this one I'm gonna do one thick coat just for time's sake and then same thing with these guys they got all those little pores in there that I, I gotta fill up. Alrighty. Alrighty, now, unlike the other stoles where that labrum didn't need to be centered, these do need to be centered because it won't be covered up. So I'm gonna try my best to center it up.
see that way and then make sure it's centered that way. Alright, now moment of truth. Hopefully I get it, I got it centered. That's not bad. It'll still get sanded, um, and then from there, so that's not bad at all. I like it. Alrighty, we are done with this project. Now, before I show you the finished project, product, I just want to go over again the shoes that I've already finished in the past. These are size size eight and a half Acadia. They got the 200 grams of insulation in there. Brand new Vibram soles, shined. They come with the laces. Um, Red wing chuckle boots converted from a wedge sole to a leather stacked heel block with a mini lug half sole overlay, whatever you want to call it. This is a size 9B. It's stretched out, so it's more like a 9D. Um, these have brand new laces, even comes with a little American flag thing on there, which I really like. I mean, I, I wear a size 9.5, and, and these fit me pretty good. You already saw these ones. If not, go check it out. I rebuilt these. This used to be like this, like these ones, all black, but I changed it to the tan. I changed the midsole, the tan foam, or whatever you want, a cushion, and then new. It's last time I called it the 100 soles. I was mistaken. It's the 148 sole by Vibram. Okay. These beautiful, beautiful. Stingray cowboy boots. Now it's hard to see, but I did dye it almost like a marine cordovan. In the picture, it you got a better better view of it. But Vibram top lift leather stack heel blocks, cleaned and shined the uppers. This is a size eight and a half. And then these, my favorite. I don't know. The new ones that I just finished throw competition with this, but this is size 8D, a thorough good, made in the USA. Um, eight inch round toe. You got the light colored um, welt, light colored midsole, leather midsole with the white Vibram Christie sole. It's like a 4014K or something like that. Um, but this is a size 8D. And if these were my size, I would probably wear these. I'd probably keep them. But they're not. So um, if you're interested in any of those, go check them out. Link is down below. Now, these are what they look like now. I think they turned out beautiful. 
of the Vibram logo is centered ish, more centered on that one ish. But there you go. The stitching on that. Now the leather uppers, we dyed it because it was like a tan. We dyed it almost like a dark brown just to give it more contrast with the light colored. Um, over time, this it looks a little yellow now, but over time it'll it'll fade and turn more like that. Um, we replaced the cushion. That is a cheap foam. It, it doesn't give really, really any cushion. We replaced it with cork, which will actually form to your foot as you wear them and be more comfortable. Um, so it'd be almost like you're wearing, it, almost like you brought these brand new. Um, then we went and put a leather midsole on there, which will also start forming to your foot and make the boot more comfortable. Also that leather midsole, as long as you keep the welt, as long as the welt doesn't need to be replaced, all that needs to be replaced on these once the soles wear down is the sole itself. So whatever cobbler you take it to, one that you trust, or if you want to send it back to me, all I have to do is replace this black Viber midsole. Or if you wanted to change it to a white midsole or a white sole, we could do that too. Um, but yeah. So there, this is from, I don't know what, it almost is like Aztec. There's a little, this is a tag on the inside. I don't know if you could read Spanish, but that's the tag. There's no markings as far as size on these boots. Now I wear a size nine to nine and a half. I'm actually currently wearing 10 and a half pair of boots. Um, but I have a pair of really thick insoles in there. So I'm going to go after trying these on, I'm going to go ahead and say they're size 11, 11, 11 and a half. Um, so if that's your size and you really like these boots, these will last a lot longer than most of the boots you buy today. Now, as you can see, it's hard, kind of hard to hide the transition of the welt coming meeting, but I mean, it's not bad. It's not horrible, but there you go. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this video, please hit a thumbs up, subscribe for more because I got more videos, more boots, more shoes to come. Um, yeah, I, I totally spaced out. If you have any boots that you would like to customize, rebuild, upgrade, um, contact me via Instagram. Uh, link is in the description below. Um, thank you. Have a good day or night whenever you're watching this. And as always, God bless.